Hello, I'm Professor Von Schmohawk, and welcome to Why You. So far in our lectures, we have studied several types of functions of a real variable. In particular, we saw that linear functions have graphs that are lines and that quadratic functions have graphs that are parabolas. Both of these functions are examples of a broader class of functions called polynomial functions. Polynomial functions are powerful tools that allow us to mathematically model many types of real-world problems in areas such as physics, economics, and social science. In the next several lectures, we will explore these functions so let's start by examining a typical example of a polynomial. Polynomials are sums of one or more terms called monomials. A monomial is a single term that may contain a variable or a product of variables with non-negative integer exponents. These variables may be multiplied by a constant called the monomials coefficient. Although monomials can contain multiple variables, the monomials we will be discussing will contain only a single real variable, x. Likewise, the coefficients of these monomials will be real numbers. Therefore, in the next few lectures, we will consider only real polynomials. In our polynomial example, each of the four monomials can be written as x with a non-negative integer exponent and a constant coefficient. The first monomial is already in this form since it contains x with an exponent 5 and a coefficient of 2. The second monomial also contains x with a non-negative integer exponent, in this case 3. And although no coefficient appears in this monomial, monomials with no coefficient have an implied coefficient of 1. The third monomial has a coefficient of 9, and although x is not written with an exponent, variables with no exponent are understood to have an exponent of 1. The fourth monomial consists of only a constant. However, the constant 12 can be thought of as a coefficient of x to the 0 power, since in algebra, variables with an exponent of 0 are typically defined as 1. So each of these monomials can be written as a constant coefficient times x with a non-negative integer exponent. As this example shows, when written in standard form, the terms of a polynomial expression are ordered so that the exponents decrease going from left to right. Likewise, if one of the terms is simply a constant, then that term goes last. If a term contains a variable with no exponent, it is placed in the same order as if it had an exponent of 1. And monomials with a coefficient of 1 are normally written without a coefficient. Since polynomials are ordered so that the exponents decrease going from left to right, the first term, called the leading term, always contains the largest exponent. The value of that exponent determines the degree of the polynomial. Therefore, this expression would be called a fifth-degree polynomial. Since exponents in a polynomial are non-negative, variables cannot have exponents such as negative 1, which is 1 over x, or negative 2, which is 1 over x squared. Likewise, since exponents must be integers, fractional exponents are not allowed, such as x to the one-half power, which is the square root of x, or x to the one-third power, which is the cube root of x. 
Remember, however, that the coefficients and constants in polynomials can be any real number. Polynomials may contain any finite number of terms, including only a single term, in which case the polynomial would also be a monomial. That monomial could contain a variable or could simply be a constant, and that constant could be any number including zero. Polynomials consisting of one term, two terms, or three terms have special names. These polynomials are referred to as monomials, binomials, and trinomials respectively. Since the leading terms of all of these examples contain x to the fifth power, these polynomial expressions would be referred to as a fifth degree monomial, a fifth degree binomial, and a fifth degree trinomial. You may occasionally see polynomial expressions represented in general notation such as this. So let's see how to decipher this notation. In this general representation of a polynomial expression, the a's with the little subscripts represent constants. These constants can each be positive, negative, or zero. To represent an nth degree polynomial, the leading term is written as a sub n times x to the nth power. The next term in the polynomial is then written as a sub n minus 1 times x to the n minus 1 power. The term after that is a sub n minus 2 times x to the n minus 2 power, and so on, with the remaining terms following the same pattern. The last two terms containing x are represented as a sub 2 times x to the second power, plus a sub 1 times x to the first power, followed by the constant term a sub 0. Any of the constants other than the leading coefficient may be 0, effectively eliminating those terms from the polynomial. However, the leading coefficient a sub n must be non-zero, otherwise this would not represent an nth degree polynomial. So as an example, let's see how we would represent the polynomial 3x to the fifth power plus x cubed minus 5x squared plus x minus 15 using this general notation. Since the leading term in our polynomial 3x to the fifth power has an exponent of 5, n in the general notation is 5. n minus 1 and n minus 2 are then 4 and 3. We now set the constants in the general notation to the corresponding coefficient values of the polynomial. The coefficient of the polynomial's x to the fifth term is 3, so a sub 5 is 3. Since there is no x to the fourth term in the polynomial, a sub 4 is 0, effectively eliminating that term. Next, since the x cubed term has an unwritten coefficient of 1, a sub 3 is 1. Likewise, a sub 2 is negative 5. A sub 1 is 1. And A sub 0 is negative 15. Since the coefficients of 1 do not need to be written, we can now eliminate them. As we mentioned in the beginning of this lecture, polynomial expressions can define polynomial functions. A zero-degree polynomial function would be a constant function whose graph is a horizontal line. A first-degree polynomial function would be a linear function whose graph is a sloped line. 
And a second degree polynomial function would be a quadratic function whose graph is a parabola. However, the graphs of higher degree polynomial functions can be much more interesting and varied. In the next lecture, we will see how the shapes of those graphs are affected by the various terms of the polynomial.